It's probably the biggest uh, driver of of the like of stress was the anticipation, what to expect. Are, are we going to be the next New York? Are we going to see what we saw in Italy? Are we going to um, contract COVID ourselves? Are we going to bring it home to the fa our families? Yeah. This lot of unknowns, and then. We weren't overwhelmed by numbers by any means, yeah. but it became fairly clear early on that we were able to protect ourselves. As we progressed through that first wave, you could see the nerves start to settle down. There were other challenges too. One of the more difficult scenarios were how people were separated from their families and seeing loved ones die alone at times, I think were, were, were you know, were, was, was a challenging aspect of, of the care. Yeah. The vaccines was this like, uh, how do I put it? It was like this, another huge relief, like this godsend was like, wow, you know, less than a year out of the, into the pandemic and we have this tool that's going to prevent people from getting sick and uh, another layer of protecting for ourselves. It was, it was just this huge, uh, like this relief. You could feel a sigh. What I've always said with the pandemic response is that we have to look at it holistically. There's going to be, you know, how you tr your intervention or your restriction is going to have some impacts on that they'll be unintended and how do you mitigate that and it was tragic in that first wave you'd see you know BIPOC community being hit the hardest you'd see uh, uh, people that were essential workers people that didn't have the option to stay home as everyone was saying they they're the ones that are your uber drivers they're the ones uh, uh, you know the nursing homes the personal support workers yeah. Um, they're living in multi-generational homes and mm -hmm. this is part of the, the frustration I, I feel like with, with COVID, like it really did discriminate when it came to severe outcomes. So really, I always, I've been saying this from the beginning, let, let's reverse engineer this, who lands in ICU mm -hmm. and let's make sure they get all the tools that they need to prevent them from yeah. doing that. So early in the pandemic, there was a big proponent of paid leave and that was why. You know, to when I mean, you got to make a decision between getting a COVID test or yeah. going to work, yeah. so you make your make sure your ends meet. Uh, you know, what are most people going to do? And then, ironically, you're in a, a in a multi generational home, and maybe the essential worker wasn't that at risk of of getting of dying from COVID, but their mom was, yeah. and then the whole house gets it, and it was very. Like we were seeing it everywhere. The holistic theme is is something that's important to me. Like to really think about how, not just one aspect of health is, but mental health, physical health, cancer screening, cardiovascular health, stroke. All these things are impacted by our policies, and we need to address them as well. Even when the vaccine start to roll out, if target specific uh, high risk areas, um, brilliant. And OPH's messaging the. The uh, strategies, like I, I think they really, like like Vera and company, they, they deserve like, I don't know, like some, I want to say metal, but it's, mm -hmm. that's not good enough, like, uh, yeah. you know, accolades yeah. when this is yeah. said and done. One of the things that I'm, I'm so proud of the medical community has been, we've been adaptable, like, not to sound too... Um, pessimistic but I think we're we're slow to adapt to change t traditionally yeah. in medicine and knowing that where we'd see the latest information and the latest data and us responding to it being like okay we need to put our patients on steroids we need to put them on uh, blood thinners we need to be more proactive of putting them on their stomachs for improve their oxygenation like the, the how adaptable we were I hope we look at that moving forward when it comes to our responses it really has to be about the data what does the data tell us you know i would love to avoid any politicalization when it comes to covid response it really needs to be about what is the data telling us and let's focus our interventions on people that need it the most mm -hmm. um and it, i mean overall it just shows us where our holes in our our, our healthcare system are we we all, all saw the the negative impact on long-term care um you know, and uh, in, in, in terms of hospital, like overall, like when we look at capacity, you know, yeah. to take care of critically yeah. ill, we know how vulnerable we were uh, as a province. Like, I think all these things, like, are lessons that I hope we can take away moving forward. And um, and, and I, I do think we'll, we, we are learning. Like, we, I have confidence that 
seeing these things, we are going to try and address them because it's, it's too important. A lot of heroes out there. They really were. Like I, considering what was at stake and, you know, working the hours they did, you know, 12 hours in PPE at the bedside of a, uh, the patient and trying the best to, you know, care for them and, and, and like they really were heroes. The nurses, the respiratory therapists, physiotherapists, that those that were having to be like at the bedside for hours and hours, you know, like those were the, really the heroes when you look back at all of this.